Hi YouTube and happy Sunday. I hope you all had a great weekend and boy do I have an exciting video in store for you tonight. I'm going to show you how you can take these old classic pulse style rotary phones and get them ringing again on modern voice over IP systems. I love these classic 20th century whirly mabobs because they're so simple to operate. They have a really wonderful aesthetic and they're super, super reliable. Indeed, who could not love that classic sound? Previously, I've shown you this green, this avocado green NETNT, New England Telephone and Telegraph rotary phone that I got working with SDF. This we've had in the family for at least 20 years, if not 30 or almost 40. And now is a good time to point out some of the differences between, you know, this newer 1975 refurbished rotary phone with an older 1970 original Bell system, uh, Western, Western Electric 500, 500 CD here, 500 DM over there. I got the second phone because I wanted to have a rotary phone elsewhere in the house. And I wanted to use multiple different um, ATAs and, and extensions. So it's nice to have rotary phones in, in different places. And, you know, I could use as an intercom even. Uh, one thing before I explain the problem that came up is the differences between this and the, the refurbished model. The phone, the handsets um, fixed to the main body of the phone, unlike uh, this uh, refurbished model, which has a phone jack put in so I can remove the handset up here or from the body of the phone. Maybe I won't do that now since it's uh, the screws are loose. And the same is true of the phone cord. But anyway, what was the problem with this new rotary phone I got? Well, it turned out it didn't ring. It was configured in what's called a party line fashion, where Neither of the people connected can hear each other's rings. So it turned out just with a few simple changes, I was able to make it ring again. I will go ahead and pull off the cover since it's not screwed in. I wanted to save that time in the video and I'll show you the changes I made. Okay, so this is the rotary dial up here and I'll turn it to the back and you'll see just how simple this thing is. Um, Okay, let's zoom in really quick. Uh, you can see the bell. Uh, great sound there. Another interesting thing about this is in the bell, there's uh, plastic uh, dishes or sleeves inside for the bell to uh, hit, I guess. And so this doesn't have quite, or didn't have as quite as, as, clean and uh, metallic of a sound of the uh, 500DM, but still very nice nonetheless. There's the coil that actuates the hammer that hits the bells, the uh, hook, I, I, I guess that's called, um, anyway, the, sw the switch to hang up, and the main terminal block. This is, this is the network box, and it is a 425E June 1970 network box. It's about to be 51 years old, much older than me. And that's really the key to getting this to ring again. I've already done the changes, but let me give us a bird's eye view here and show you exactly what I did. Um, okay, so there's connections at... Um, uh, L1 and L2 for the tip, which is green, and ring, which is red. You don't need to worry about black and yellow from the phone line. And the way this was set up, the fat black wire from the ringer uh, that's here, and I'm going to have to tamp, tamp down again, was connected to yellow or ground, which it, it shouldn't be. And then the second thing was that the red that I, from the um, ringer that I, I moved over here um, onto L2, I think it is, was originally on K, which was also bad. I had to make both those changes. So put red and red here on L2 and black from the ringer that was originally over here on G over to 
uh, L1. I'm looking over at my tablet, which I'll show later, and that has the wiring diagram, and I'll include the link to that page on the description of the YouTube video. Anyway, let me uh, make sure that doesn't come out again. That's not so good. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very simple system. You'll have a microphone and a speaker and a dial and a ringer. And for every number you dial, there's a different number of pulses that's uh, sent to the central station, or in my case, an ATA, Analog Telephone Adapter. There are some ATAs that support pulse dial, like the InnoMedia MTA 6328-2RE that I'm using now, and the Linksys RTP300 with older firmware, as well as the WRTP54G that I will feature in a future video. All of those are really inexpensive, and I mean, you can get your classic rotary phone back on a VoIP system. Anyway, so those are the changes. I'll just make sure that's uh, tamped down nicely. Loosen that a little. I push these on. Yeah, yeah, that seems to be tamped down nicely, but anyway, no soldering, nothing. The phone companies want these to be really easy to fix. Let me zoom in a little bit more for you to look at that, but of course uh, you'll have the schematic as a nice image uh, in the description. Yes, yeah, so you can see black on green and red on red. Black and green and red and red. Red from the phone, red from the ringer. Anyway, and I... Um, you can also adjust the bias spring up there to, uh, to make it ring um, a bit more frequently and louder or slower. I have it, I guess, in the um, stiffer position so it doesn't ring as often um, and thus it isn't as loud. And I did have to adjust the bell a bit so there was um, space. Oh, wow, that's a hard angle. Yes, yeah, so there was a little bit of a gap instead of it being stuck on the right bell, which wasn't a problem with the um, old 500DM. Okay, so hopefully all that's clear. Um, now let me go ahead and put this back together and give you a taste of the wonderful rings of these rotary phones. Okay. Okay, so this goes here. It's not as cumbersome as um, it is on the 500DM, which I'll have to screw back together. Uh, yeah, so I got it. It's area code 513. I got it because it's, it, oh, it's already area code 513 uh, for Cincinnati, where I am right now. Um, yeah, you can tell it's a newer model because it's not black on the bottom. I think the other one is a 50s or 60s model that was later uh, refurbished. Certainly some of the parts in the other one are from 1955 and 1960 and still now in 2021 work incredibly well. Bell system property, not for sale. And um, yeah, another thing is the loudness dial up here will push the uh, bells further... Um, I think further apart for louder and uh, closer together for quieter, which, as you could imagine, makes makes sense. Okay, uh, that's uh, held together. Nice. Uh, plastic feet. I have one that's disintegrating on the other one. Um, yeah, really solid case. Wow. Pick it up. Okay, so I'll go ahead and get the other one put together. This is a little harder because of the uh, jacks. Yeah. yeah, the cords on there are pretty good. Um, yeah, this used to be in the garage with bird poop on it, um, but it works great. Um, 
Yeah, both Western Electric, not Stromberg Carlson, ITT Automatic Electric, or any of the other manufacturers. And these work great on voice over IP. Uh, maybe one day, once I get Google Voice bridged to asterisk, I could do um, rotary dialing to the PSTN through Google Voice. That would really be something. Um, really, really be something. Um, uh, someone I know also is using this in home automation, I think, talking to Alexa over the phone. Okay, so that's in, yeah, got our jack placed properly, uh, held in, um, and on the other side, uh, get that uncoiled, okay, so I'll make sure, yeah, I'm zoomed out all the way, I'll ring each of these and see if you can hear any difference in the uh, ring. Okay, that one's in there. This one has a uh, terminal block that's for the black phone. Okay, there we go. Um, let's get these two connected. And let's call the green phone first. Um, There's your 500 DM bell. And on the troublesome one, let's hear it. I'll have to check. I might have loosened the bias spring in there, but as you can tell, they, they both ring. Uh, it's, it's a nice ring. I can hear it from far away, but it's not really penetrating or irritating. Um, and these things, you know, are 50 years old at least and still work great today and work with your voice over IP systems. I think I'll, I'll cover a bit more on that in, in future videos. The ATA I'm using here is an Intermedia MTA 6328-2RE that I unlocked, but um, you can use the Linksys RTP300 or WRTP54G, which is also a Wi-Fi router. They're really inexpensive and do a great job. Anyway, so I hope that was informative for you and shows you the quick and easy way you can get rotary phones ringing if they've been you know configured differently on your telephone lines or voice over IP systems. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe down below. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Take care.